caretaking couple being influenced by supernatural forces, a house that seems to have a life of its own, a young son in danger and bizarre old photographs on display. It's easy to see the connection between 1976's Burnt Offerings, which is one of Stephen King's favourite horror movies, and his subsequent classic horror novel, The Shining. Thanks for clicking on. I'm Stephen at Real Classic Film Reviews. If you love classic movies, please consider dropping a like, subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell to keep up to date on all future episodes. A married couple who, along with their young son, find a grand old house in the country to stay in over the summer. It's super cheap, only $900 for the entire summer, a rental fee they just can't turn down, especially since it includes water, electricity and free demonic possession. I mean, at that price, they should have known it was too good to be true, especially when crazy old Burgess Meredith rolls in on a wheelchair, dropping colossal hints as to what the family has in store for them during their stay, literally telling them that they'll never be the same again, and including a strange stipulation that they have to babysit his old mother, the mysterious Mrs. Allardyce, who lives in the attic and doesn't ever leave her room. Do you like it? We love it. Really? God, when it comes alive, tell them, brother. Tell them what it's like in the summer. Well, they'd never believe it. It's beyond anything that you have ever seen in your life. Before we go on, I do have to mention the film does have a cast it doesn't really deserve. We mentioned Burgess married this Zadie cameo, but we also have Oliver Reed and Karen Black playing the parents, plus screen legend Betty Davis playing their old auntie, and possibly being the scariest looking thing in the film. So it's not spoiling it for anyone to say that of course, the place isn't all as it seems, and as the film moves forwards, everyone starts going a bit Looney Tunes. Like many a haunted house movie, it's the house that's probably the star. In this case, it has the most interesting character trait, being able to spookily regenerate itself as the family living inside it falls apart. Karen Black playing the mother who, bless her, looks a bit deranged before she goes wacko, eventually becomes a crazed, cleaning obsessed nutter. As the plot progresses, she begins acting weirder and slowly starts to dress like she's raided an old lady's dressing up box. Betty Davis turns into a little girl from The Exorcist and Oliver Reed looks like he's trying his best to forget he's found himself in a big budget TV movie. Now, I'm a big enough Oliver Reed fan to admit that he's probably miscast here, and I have to admit, I don't think I've liked Karen Black in anything she's done, and in Burnt Offerings, she's there in all her overacting glory. Black was actually four months pregnant during the movie, and you'll easily notice this in a few early scenes once you're aware of it. Ah, Betty Davis, crazy old legend that she is. Again, here in a slightly wasted role for her, and she famously detested Oliver Reed, refusing to speak to him off camera. Probably due to his unruly late night drunken antics, later described him as possibly one of the most loathsome human beings she'd ever had the misfortune of meeting, which I'm sure he loved. She also disliked Karen Black, claiming she didn't receive the adequate level of respect from her during production. Now, it is an over long film. You'll find yourself about an hour in before you realise nothing's actually happened, and it features far too many plot points that are never followed up on. Oliver Reed discovers a creepy family graveyard and an old child's bike, which nothing ever comes of. Hey, come look what I found. It's an old bike. You know something, Davy? They're all Allardyces. And I haven't been able to find one any newer than the 1890s. A little later on, he finds some broken glasses at the bottom of a pool. A pool that seems to be deadly, but only if you go in the deep end. But that's never really explained either. These things do build atmosphere, but the film never really provides a decent payoff. There is still plenty to enjoy, however, as the film begins to reveal its mysteriousness. How exactly is this house cleaning itself? Who is the strange Mrs. Allardyce who lives upstairs and no one's ever seen? In fact, Oliver Reed doesn't really seem to care if she's even real. But if she isn't, who's been eating the meals that they leave for her each night? 
And who are all the people in her photograph collection? Now I'm totally forgetting to mention a bizarre side plot involving flashbacks to a tragedy in Oliver Reed's childhood regarding a wordless hearse driver with a big spooky grin. He turns up as a vision frequently to menace Reed, actually seems to engage in a spot of murder late in the plot. Really, it's like he's wandered in from another movie entirely. I'm not sure how relevant he is to the film or why he's even in it actually. Now, to be fair to the film, I suppose there is at least a payoff at the end, which has a half decent, too little too late twist, which I won't spoil here. It's in this final stretch that the film seems to finally start kicking into gear. Not as popular a haunted house movie as The Shining or even the Amityville horror series, which Burt Offerings shares common themes with. It still certainly has its nerve jangling moments, but really needed a good 20 minutes chopped out of it to move things along at a sharper pace. By all means, watch it for its great cast and for the chance to see the late, great Betty Davis in one of her final film roles. And also to see how Stephen King became um, inspired to write The Shining. But if you're looking for something really spooky to watch, watch The Shining.